What up, fam? It's your man, Daryl All of the Second. I hope you're doing well. I want to drop this word. But before I do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come before the people again and share the revelation you give me. I thank you, Father, that it benefits me as well. Lord, it blesses me because it's coming from your spirit and directly from your throne. So, God, I thank you for speaking to me in the ways that you do, Father. You are always speaking, always giving words of wisdom and insight, God. And you give me what I need as my daily bread so that I can feast on it as I go through my day to day. What I've come to realize, God, is that nothing compares to you, God. Our flesh may desire a number of things because that's what we were born in, our flesh. And we were in this fallen nature of Adam. But because of your son, Jesus, the last Adam, we have eternal life and we can walk in a different mindset on this world. And so, God, I just thank you for the opportunity to feast on your word, to feast on your spiritual food, to be edified by you. Soul food, true soul food that comes from you, Father. The flesh gratifies, but you satisfy. And I just say thank you, Lord, for your spirit your word and just the things that you do in my life and the blessings you provide and for being the blessing that you are father being who you are being patient with me kind merciful listening to me even in those moments when i'm preoccupied with things apart from you father or even when i have moments when i'm distracted like i'm having idols in my own life i thank you for your love and for being a jealous god for sometimes tripping me up so that you can remind me that it's about you and to get back on track you are a merciful god you're not a forceful god but you are a God that is loving and fiercely loving and true to the core. And I thank you for your mercy and for giving me your spirit so that I can line up with you, your perfect will, your word and your presence. So as I speak this word, I say, get the glory, get the glory, get the honor and get all the attention. It's about you, Jesus. I decrease that you might increase. Hide me in your shadow and let your glory come forth and minister to the people in Jesus name. Amen. All right, y'all want to drop this word. I was listening to, um, I've heard this metaphor a few different times in life. It's kind of hot. I got to take this beanie off. I was lis I've listened to this metaphor a few times in life. And that uh, talks about the eagle and how when the eagle is flying and there's a thunderstorm, st thunderstorm is raining and all that. The eagle is the only bird that can go through the storm and rise above the storm and in in at a higher altitude than the rest of the birds. I just thought that was amazing. Um, I had heard the out I had heard it be said that when the eagles soar, crows and ravens, I believe, they come and pick at the eagle to try to mess with it. And the eagle doesn't get distracted. It simply elevates into a higher altitude that they cannot follow. That's impressive to me. And, you know, I think about the word of God, how it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And it just makes me think about the power of knowing the Lord, walking in his, his will and, and taking hold of his promises and how they come to pass. But I also thought about how in this particular analogy, how they, the, the ego goes to the storm. He doesn't run away from it. And this is an analogy I heard from a couple different people. Bishop Del Bron, I've heard him mention both analogies in numerous instances. But then I read it somewhere else as well. And I really felt like God was teaching me something because it continued to happen. And, you know, the word of God says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Oftentimes when God's trying to get your attention, he'll confirm it. And so what, what was coming to my mind is how the ego didn't run or retreat from the challenge. He ran to it and went through it and was able to elevate because he said that um, the storm allows the ego to glide to a higher altitude that it would not normally be able to do. And that reminds me of God's grace. That reminds me that when we go through the challenges that he brings to our life, when we're willing to face them, he allows us to rise, to elevate I love the scripture, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. I think that's so profound. Whenever I hear that, I think about the spirit of God on the inside of me, the Holy Spirit, the third person of God rising up through me and using me as a vessel to do whatever he would have me do and watching the, the enemy run, run away in fear because I'm walking in the authority of Jesus. I'm walking in sync with his purpose, purpose, purpose and perfect will for my life, as you can do as well as a believer. It ain't just me. Don't get it twisted. I'm a believer and I'm walking the walk, but you too can do the same. So what I'm saying is, as you have your challenges, as you have your, as you have your fate, your persecutions and your trials and your difficulties and your obstacles, there will be times where God directs you go this way, go this way, like as if you're avoiding it, I guess. If I'm careful to say that, because God doesn't raise us to run, but he teaches us how to maneuver in wisdom. But he doesn't teach us to hide in fear or avoid um, certain confrontations. And, and what I mean specifically is I think about the many illustrations in the Bible and how God would use his people to walk in authority and conquer the enemy. So I hope I ain't getting too deep and all over the place. But what I want to bring up is a story in the book of Daniel chapter six about the prophet Daniel. 
for those of you who may not know, he was in captivity because what would happen is whenever the Jews would fall short in sin, God, and they kept doing it for prolonged periods of time, God would allow them to be captured by their enemies. It was a form of chastisement. It was a form of reprimand. It was a form of rebuke. And the Bible says, God chastens those whom he loves. And so when the Lord is spanking you, it's because he loves you. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to protect you. When a parent disciplines their child, it's out of love. Now, when it's abusive, that's different, but God doesn't do that. He loves you. So if you are being under the discipline of God, that means that you are a child of the Lord because the fathers, just like fathers of the day, they have to teach their kids boundaries. The Bible says foolishness is found in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline would drive it out. Now, let me not deviate. So what I want to say is I'm going to read this story here and I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to give you all what I glean. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three over these three governors of whom Daniel was one that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss then this Daniel distinguished himself hang on, above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to setting him over the whole realm so the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful nor was there any error or fault found in him then these men said we shall not find any charge against this daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his god so these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to him king darius live forever all the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open, down on his, um, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks to before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before God before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or man within 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, that Daniel, who was one of the captains from Judah, does not show due regard for you. O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but make his petition three times a day, but, oh, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the lions mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king. I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. And the king gave command 
And they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children and their wives and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel or who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? That's a, that's a dope story. That's in Daniel six. So real quick, what I'm getting to the point of is this. Daniel was fully aware of the circumstances. He knew that to go to pray to his God would mean he would face a certain death. But he understood the God he served and he was faithful to his God as God was faithful to him. He knew what the outcome would be if he were to oppose the law that was placed before him. But he also understood my God supersedes everybody and I will not put anything before him. And so he went to his house and prayed openly, might I add, with the window open directed towards Jerusalem because he wasn't in Jerusalem anymore. He was praying towards his home where he used to be because they remember they were in captivity. And um, it was Babylon first, then um, the Babylons got overtaken by the Persians, which is this king. And so I'm saying this to say he didn't allow his faith to crumble in the time of testing. He trusted God even when it was difficult, even when he was the minority, even when everyone else around him wanted him to be dead. He surrendered to the Lord and he was faithful. They were upset with him because his character was faithful. He distinguished himself. He set himself apart and honored God with his work ethic, with his lifestyle, with his character. And they had a problem with it. And as a believer, that's going to happen to you at times. There will be some who the enemy will use to try to bring harm to you because you yourself carry the presence of God with you and you live according to the law of the Lord. And people will have issue with you. Now, I say law. Of course, you have grace. You know, people are like, we're not under the law. I'm not talking about the Mosaic Covenant. And that's fulfilled through Jesus. That's another story. But you're but, but doing what God says, reading his word, being obedient to what he's called you to do. It will ruffle feathers because you will stand out. It also brings conviction because the presence of God, his spirit in your life, he is the spirit of truth. And when there are others around who don't live in truth, they see the shining lightness of the Lord and his truth in you. It draws them closer to him or it makes them feel convicted and they want to stay away because they want to stay in the darkness because they feel exposed. And so in a sense, Daniel was exposing them in a sense because he was living according to the way of the Lord and they were not. And so they felt a certain way about him. You know, that's what I mean by saying exposed in a sense. They were able to distinguish his character from their own because they looked for anything they could to try to harm him, but nothing could be found. So they had to try to take his faith and test his faith to see if it was truly legitimate. And if, if he had succumbed to the pressure, they would have known not to respect his faith because he succumbed to the pressure. But he was willing to die because of his faith in God. And he knew God would protect him. And God did. And after he went down to that circumstance, he was elevated out of that situation. And even the king gave honor to his God. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be times where God will take you to persecutions, not only to bring glory to his name, but to showcase you as a witness for others who don't know him so that they too can recognize who he is and be drawn to him as well. So when you're in your situation and your, your trial, your tribulation and your challenge, will you face the storm like the eagle, going through it and rising above it? Or will you turn and run away like the other birds? When you go to the storm, God will elevate you above the situation because that's his grace. His grace is sufficient for in, in weakness, his strength is made perfect. How do you do that? You trust him. You seek him. You pray. The first sign of trouble, Daniel went on his knees and began to pray. Even with them lions, he stood there and prayed and the angel was sent there to protect him. Are you talking to God? Are you praying to God? Are you trusting God? Or are you simply surrendering to the pressure of those around you? We can be weak at times and make mistakes and, and compromise, but that's where God provides our strength. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Paul said that. So when we're weak, he can be strong. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And God also said, without faith, it's impossible to please me because if you believe that he exists, you believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Are you seeking him? Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and angels in heaven. Daniel wasn't ashamed. Will you be? 
He said, if you're not ashamed, he won't be ashamed of you either. He'll be his friend. He'll pardon you. You're pardoning your sins. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. My point in all this is, do you know him? And when you're tested, will you trust him? Now, you may have made a mistake in your testing like Peter, when he turned his back on Jesus and denied knowing him. But he got to be restored when he got the power, when he was visited from God. And you saw throughout the rest of the story, when he had the power of the Holy Spirit, he was doing amazing things. I got to get off this phone, but I want to say this. If you don't have a relationship with God the Father, the only way to have one is through his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord. If you believe he died on the cross and that God the Father raised him back from the dead, and you know he's the son of God, you believe that too. You ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. He will do that. You'll have challenges, as you just heard, but you'll have blessings, too. He'll elevate you. He'll promote you after your trials. Greater is he who is in you than he that's in the world. And if you know Jesus, when you die, you're going to heaven, not hell. Hell is a place for unbelievers, for people who have died in their sin, who don't know Jesus, who've rejected God. Even if you've been a good person, if you reject God, you ain't getting into heaven. So if you want to know Jesus, it's through faith. You know him. Just repeat it to me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. You are the Son of God. Also, as he's forgiven you of your sins, forgive others for what they've done to you. It's a decision. Your heart will follow. It's a decision. Because if you don't forgive, then he won't forgive you. I got to go. My name is Daryl Alder II. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. God bless you. Holla at your boy. Peace.